Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Ian McKendrick. I'm the uh, uh, founder and CEO at Faction, and we work on building driverless electric fleets. Um, but to start this out, I decided to have a little bit of fun, and I used an AI image generator to ask it, show us dirty energy versus clean energy. And this is the image it came up with. And I think a lot of us would agree it's a pretty good approximation. Um, and one of the big questions is, how are we doing in this transition to cleaner energy? If you use public vehicle charging infrastructure as a proxy, we're falling behind. Uh, China, as a new developing market for automobiles, is going EV a lot faster than the rest of us, but they're beating the rest of the world combined. And so in the United States, we're very car-centric. So we kept thinking at a faction, how do we help to affect this change, but also make it a winning strategy for some of our customers? And so we started looking at micro-logistics. And this is where where you can really make a positive impact because last mile logistics tends to be one of the most expensive parts of the supply chain. And when you look at the costs, 64% of it is your driver wages and your cost of your fuel. On top of that, we have this increasing demand for gig worker delivery services. And if you look at the metrics here, of the about almost 2 billion deliveries that were done in 2022, the majority of these are being done in internal combustion cars. And so if you can move them to a light electric system, you're going to be cutting about 90% of their carbon footprint. And if we don't do this, we're all sitting in traffic for the rest of our lives. And we live in this culture where we're trying to do one size fits all with the automobile, and it's leading to urban blight, congestion, and really not you know, trying to fit the vehicles to the missions. So at Faction, um, before I get to that, I'll tell, I had one other fun AI uh, image that I did here. And I asked the AI image generator, I said, give me a robot delivery of a sandwich and give me an automobile delivery of a sandwich. And the AI system kind of keyed on the thing we all recognize, which is if you're using a vehicle to deliver a sandwich, it better be a pretty big sandwich. Um, I like to make the joke that bringing any of us a pizza in a 4,000 pound electric vehicle with 300 miles of battery range is also a little bit of overkill. So at Faction, we essentially went and took light electric systems, put on a light uh, autonomy system, and we combine this with teleoperation. Our system is called teleassist. This allows us to have a vehicle that's highly automated, but a human can help it on occasion when the vehicle encounters something it needs some assistance with. This is in contrast to traditional autonomy, which looks a little bit more like a data center in the back of your trunk, um, which is something that really doesn't fit for light mobility. In fact, if you look at what we do, we're about 90% less cost of the hardware on the vehicle systems. But on top of it, more importantly, we're about 95% less power consumption. If we were to take a traditional autonomy approach with one of these light electric vehicles, we could flatten the battery in an hour and a half without even driving a single mile. And this is where the faction technology stack is really right-sized for the mission that we're trying to accomplish. Now, let me show you a little bit how it works. So our vehicles tend to operate like a virtual train system. So what they do is they follow known missions. And if you see the purple line up there, that vehicle's operating autonomously on the screen, you see. Um, but what's going to happen here is the vehicle's coming up on an obstacle. And so it's alerting operations that it needs some help. At this point, a human is able to connect to that vehicle and then provide some assistance. Because while, you know, computers are pretty good at staying in the lane and not hitting things, it's the judgment calls which we struggle with right now with artificial intelligence. So the human can just adjust this course line, allow this vehicle to then get around that obstacle and get right back on mission. And the, the beauty of this is two things. One, it's very cost effective and it's a, a robust way to kind of do this that's scalable. But also now we have some training data. So if we run into similar scenarios, we can actually make our system better over time. By only having a few operators, you're then able to handle large fleets of these vehicles. That scales very nicely. Um, I like, also like to joke that you know, our teleoperational workstation, it's $2,000 including the desk and the chair. So it's a very cost-effective system to be able to scale these fleets. We started with micro-logistics. In fact, in the Bay Area, our first customer was Coca-Cola Bakery. Uh, they have a commercial uh, bakery in Redwood City. And they were trying to get by with using gig services for a lot of their B2B deliveries. But the problem is gig workers tend to cancel these because they realize businesses don't tip. We were also told that occasionally they would ship 50 cupcakes to a coffee shop in the morning. And once in a while, one of those cupcakes is missing. Um, so the robot system won't, won't really do that as much. A second phase for us is vehicle on demand. And this is where we can bring you a vehicle and you can drive it yourself. 
And this is something that's a little more you know, passion for a lot of us for our personal use cases, because if we can make vehicles a shared asset, it means that you can declutter the streets and bring a vehicle to when you need it, then you drive it yourself and then you walk away when you're done. Um, we prototype this uh, in operation right now, and we're getting ready to go actually do some customer launches with it as well. The technology applies to any vehicle type, uh, but we started with light electrics because we're passionate about right-sizing the fleets. Uh, Arkimoto was our first chassis that we integrated the technology on, and we also did this solo with Arkimoto, uh, sorry, Electromechanica. A uh, little bit upset that Electromechanica has pivoted now to trucks because we really love the solo. Um, and we also announced that we're working with Tello Trucks, which is kind of a right-sized you know, truck format for urban use cases. We operate in the Bay Area, uh, generally between South San Francisco and Mountain View. The one thing I will highlight here is that all the routes that we operate on are paid routes. So we don't try to map an entire metro area. We go where our customers are going to pay us. Um, this allows us to deploy a little quicker. So when we go into new markets, we for first capture the data for the areas where our customer needs us to run. We will be operating in Las Vegas coming this fall. Uh, one of our partners is GoCar Tours. GoCar had a very interesting use case for the vehicle on demand situation where they have a rental depot in the arts district but they were looking to expand their reach. And so what we can do is we can move a vehicle from the depot out to partner hotels on the Las Vegas Strip. Once again, I like to say we pick unfair fights. So, you know, we have to map up the strip and down the strip, but now you turn every hotel into a virtual rental center. And so it gives them a lot more reach for their services. While we started with the light electrics, um, the technology can go onto other vehicle formats and larger formats too. Um, we are passionate though about, you know, fitting the vehicle to the mission. Um, so you only bring a, a smaller vehicle if you need it. Of course, you could also do this in larger vehicles when necessary too. We are over in uh, booth 605 and we have a couple vehicles on display. Happy to talk more about what we do with our uh, systems and show you a little bit more about how Teleassist works as well as the driverless technology. Uh, but thanks for the time.